This is the world's most popular cage bird. But few of us are familiar with its wild ways or know where it comes from. Its true home is the outback of Australia and the bird is the budgerigar. Birds have been kept as pets for thousands of years. Parrots are favourites because of their bright colours and chatty nature. But of all the parrots, one of the smallest, the budgerigar, has adapted best to life in captivity. Its affectionate and charming nature has captured people's hearts. I think I might have that large one there with the blue tail. Most people think of budgies as cage birds, but for every budgie behind bars, there are thousands living free in the wild. The Australian budgerigar is one of the world's most nomadic and social birds. They roam over most of the continent, including some of the hottest and driest deserts. Budgies travel in flocks. They can cruise at 90 kilometres an hour and have the endurance to cover vast areas in search of food and water. Budgies can survive weeks without water. When they do drink, it's quick. They often drink on the wing because at the waterhole they're exposed to predators. They have the ability to suck water rapidly. In two to three seconds, they gulp and go. But not all birds are in such a hurry. Another sociable parrot of the outback is the corella. Because corellas are bigger than budgerigars, they don't have to worry so much about birds of prey and can enjoy a leisurely drink. About a quarter of Australia's birds are nomadic, moving in response to the climate in a search for the best that the land can offer. Flock pigeons share the budgerigar's roving and social nature. Such a clutter of birds at the waterhole brings out the hunters. A whistling kite scans the mob for any slow individual. In the vastness of Australia, there will always be isolated patches where rain has fallen. In their endless search for these, budgerigars fly far and fast. Although nomadic, they are partly governed by the seasons. In summer, they're more likely to head north for the monsoons, then return south for the winter rains. The climate of arid Australia is one of the most erratic on Earth. Years may pass with scarcely any rain at all. When drought is severe and widespread, life is such a struggle that young budgies wouldn't survive. At times like these, budgerigars cease breeding to wait for the day the rains return.
One day, drought breaks. Creek beds that have been dry sand for years become raging rivers in minutes. Water not soaked up into the desert sands may flow for a thousand kilometers or more. For 10 years, this part of Western Australia was vast, dry plains. Now, it's a 2,500 square kilometre lake, the result of flooding from monsoonal rains. Lake Gregory, as it's now known, will have a life of five, maybe ten years. Nomadic water birds are quick to find the new lake. Fish life appears, and within weeks, water birds home in. Black swans fly thousands of kilometers from coastal estuaries to the center of the continent. Though Lake Gregory seems large, it's only a tiny oasis in the immensity of the land. For the budgies, it's an opportunity not to be missed. Though budgerigars live in the desert, they try to avoid its extremes. They follow creek beds to find Lake Gregory. Everything they need is here. The water will last for a long time, and Spinifex grass seed will provide food for months to come. Budgies arrive in flock after flock. The zebra finch, an Australian native bird, is also a popular pet. Unlike budgerigars, they need water often and wet their whistles every hour or so. Zebra finches are one of the quickest birds in the world to breed after rain. Within hours of a good cloudburst, they start mating and nest building. Budgerigars are quick to follow and are soon inspecting trees for a good home. The early birds get the hollows out of reach of predators on the ground. But there are also threats from falcons. Budgerigar society is made up of loose colonies and there are no arguments over territory. Most suitable trees are occupied by more than one couple. It's a competitive market for home seekers. Cockatiels are busy looking. So too are tree martins who like budgie size apartments. There's less competition from galahs and pink cockatoos, who prefer much larger homes. With a nest established, the budgerigars turn their attentions to each other. The male tries to impress his chosen partner by regurgitating food. This shows his potential as a provider for the family. 
Then, with head bobbing foreplay, they begin to mate. Bunjerigars breed quickly. In the wild, this is vital for the survival of the species, and in captivity, it makes them a favourite with bird breeders. Domestic budgies are not bred for survival, they're bred for their looks. Experimenting with combinations of genes has produced an enormous variety of colours, shapes and sizes some quite different to the wild form. Top birds are lovingly prepared for hotly contested budgie shows. Three, three, three five, five, case number two. Yeah. One, five, seven, five. That one's right. Three, six, two, case three. Yeah. Then one, one, nine, six. Forty, case one. Yeah, we've got that. Two, three, three five, five, case two. two. No, the only thing we haven't got on there is keys. It's a long way from the bush. Many of the birds now winning awards in Australia have European ancestry. A century of overseas breeding has produced a type that's almost twice the size of the wild budgie. Australian breeders are now paying big money to import budgies back to their native land. What do judges look for in a show bird? Tidy colouring? Fluffiness, large stature, arched back, long tail feathers, big head and correct deportment. Qualities that humans think a budgie should have. That's got to be returned and you get a plaque next year and you've got a Noritake dinner set to pick up up the top there. Okay. Okay. Exhibition birds win on looks, with function running a very poor second. Hold your bird up and I'll let take a picture. A prize budgie wouldn't be a winner in the wild. Here, it's a different story. The qualities that favour survival are the ones that matter. Lake Gregory is an ideal environment for the tough bush budgies, and they're making the most of it. Females are now producing their first clutch of about four to six eggs. The mother stays on the nest, brooding the eggs, which start hatching in just under three weeks. The male's role is to find food for the family. Their favourite is grass seed, which they gobble till their crops are full. The mother constantly looks after the newborn chicks, only leaving the nest to receive food from her mate. Some females rarely venture out, preferring to be fed in the safety of the hollow. It's the chick's turn, and their mother regurgitates food to them. Budgerigars are now at their most vulnerable. They must attend their helpless young, and predators are a constant threat. The best hollows are high in the trees, but they were the first to be occupied. Some birds had no choice but to nest near the ground. 
Woma pythons can easily find nests like these. For every chick that's eaten, thousands of others survive. The instinct of budgerigars is to cheat death by creating an abundance of life. This species survives through sheer weight of numbers. So, while conditions are good, they breed as fast as they can. Budgerigars lay eggs over a period of time, so the chicks in one nest are all at different stages of growth. Parents can give liquid food to the very young and at the same time solids to the bigger ones. Older and bolder now, juveniles peer from their dark birthplace into a bright world beyond. Childhood doesn't last long for a budgie. At just three months of age, they'll be old enough to breed. Parents soon become grandparents, but they still keep popping out eggs. The big day arrives for a young budgie. At about four weeks, chicks have grown tail and wing feathers and are technically ready to fly. This may well be the most dangerous day in the life of a young budgie. Living in hollows, there's no way they can test their wings to be sure they work for the first flight. Parents call to their young, encouraging them to leave the nest. After one last feed, childhood comes to an end. Most budgies escape attack, but others plunge into different dangers. This youngster lives to fly again. Another is not so fortunate. Death by drowning is a sad irony for a bird of the desert. 
Generation has been added to generation, and there are now millions of budgerigars at Lake Gregory. The seed is finished, so they must now take to the wing to search the desert for ripening grasslands. When they find what they're looking for, wandering bands come together in what is one of the world's rare wildlife spectacles. When budgerigars flock, they do so in mobs that could number hundreds of thousands, maybe a million birds. Such a concentration of budgerigars attracts many different birds of prey. Black falcons, little falcons, spotted harriers and little eagles. The flock is attacked from all directions. Eventually, a little falcon makes a kill. It eats some of the carcass and will feed the rest to its chicks. The strength of Bunjerigar society is the flock. There are no leaders and no pecking order. All budgies are equal. When a flock is under attack, it may seem out of control but there is purpose in this mid-air chaos. The flock flies as one for the good of all. While on the ground, budgerigars are easy targets for hunting birds. But hundreds of thousands of eyes are on alert, and as soon as danger threatens, they take to the air. The sheer numbers of budgies, their speed and aerobatic skills, bewilder the predators. Zeroing in on one target amongst a million is not easy, and often they miss. but a black falcon goes straight for the centre of the mob. This time, it's successful.
Although predators take some budgerigars, they don't affect the population as a whole. The real threats are unpredictable extremes of climate. But the budgie is a great survivor. These little parrots, familiar to most people as pets, are tough enough to cope with some of the harshest areas on the planet. Their unruffled and affectionate nature has earned them a place as a companion for humans. Their nomadic behaviour, rapid breeding and the power of the flock will ensure the wild bush budgies continue their journeys across the deserts of Australia.